Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome to my live call. My name is Chad Allen. And today we are going to be discussing a very controversial topic, the COVID-19 response and why I believe in herd immunity as being the best course of action. So, my name, like I said, my name is Chad Allen. I have a background in nursing. I was a registered nurse and I have a master's prepared nurse as well. And so I've dealt a lot with medical type stuff and especially, especially uh, on the psychiatric side of things. And I lived in the Philippines for about two and a half years. I took care of my ailing uh, wife who ended up dying of breast cancer. She was pregnant with our beautiful, beautiful daughter. And she ended up dying of breast cancer. Uh, she got she got the breast cancer actually uh, during her pregnancy when she was we found out when she was thirty weeks pregnant. And then it was so uh, it was so aggressive that uh, it took her life within one year, which is really unfortunate. And since then, I've been looking for a way. I was looking for a way to help people with their health in a much more uh, civilized way. You know, I've seen the, the chemo, I've seen the natural way as well. And so I've really been looking for ways to help people uh, boost their immune systems so that they can, uh, so that they can have a better life and not have to hope, hopefully not have to face the challenges that I faced when my wife, uh, when I was taking care of my wife, wife who had uh, breast cancer. So, so if you uh, if you're on, you can say hi, and you can also share the video, especially if it if this benefits uh, you and others, and it would be that would be deeply deeply appreciated. And so let's start to let's start the chit chat. Okay, so. Uh, COVID-19 response, we know that it's, it's a very controversial topic. We know that, you know, some people say that the response is just right, where other people are saying it's too much, where others are saying that it is not enough. So what is the right answer? You know, and I always will leave that pretty much up to you, but there are, I have certain, certain opinions, but this is not really a political uh, forum. So I am just going to share with you uh, some, some of the things that I have found out. And, but I want to base it more on immunological uh, reasoning behind why I feel the way that I feel. And so let's take a look at uh, Let's take a look at the, the amount of cases. So right now there are over 4 million cases and 100, approximately 150,000 deaths, which comes out to about a 3.5% death rate in America. So it is understandable that some people would say that it's not, that the response in of itself is not enough. And while others also will say that it's too much because when you look at the numbers, the number of people who are infected versus the number of people who died, uh, it's actually considered by many to be a low number and therefore it does not uh, demonstrate the kind of response, the overreach response that we uh, are experiencing right now. You know, especially with the mask mandates and, uh, and uh, you, know, you, you had to have, you had to be six feet apart, all that good stuff. Others say that, well, because of that three and a half percent death rate, that uh, it, we are not doing enough. We have to be, we have to have the mass mandates ex extended. We cannot go to school. We cannot uh, go into stores without a mask. We cannot, we have to be more than six feet apart because, you know, of these certain things are, that are taking place. And it's, it is very, very understandable, actually. And, 
But is it really the right kind? Is it really the right response uh, to this uh, pandemic that we are seeing worldwide? Because if you look at certain, if you look at other countries, certain countries that have no mask mandates, no social distancing, they've yeah they had they had lots of people get sick, but they had very few deaths, and therefore they are not experiencing. Uh, what we are experiencing here in the U.S. You have others who have been on lockdown for so long that they've completely locked down the economy, completely locked down the uh, from people from uh, traveling uh, easily, and yet their cases are still on the rise. So what is the the right kind of response that we should have? So this is why... I am a big believer in herd immunity because we, when we are, we understand your immune system and how it works uh, on a daily basis for you, then the, the obvious answer uh, is that we should allow herd immunity to take hold. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can have herd immunity. One is by vaccines, like you get a vac uh, vaccination, and then if enough, if enough people get uh, that vaccination, then that builds what they call herd immunity. The other way is to allow for people to get sick. And for when people get sick, then that means that they have the antigens in their body. And therefore, if enough people have those antigens, there is herd immunity as well. Now, with the vaccines, there are a lot of synthetics. Uh, in the vaccines. So uh, there are a lot of people who are not really for getting a vaccine because they don't like the synthetics that are within those vaccines because they fear and they feel that if they were to give that to themselves or to their children, that there, that there could be potentially a vaccine injury that can cause irreversible harm. Now, some will claim that for that 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 is a very low chance of happening, while others would say that is a very uh, quite high chance of happening. So whatever your view is, whether it is uh, your pro vaccine vaccine or anti vaccine, you know it's certainly up to you, and you can certainly make your own choice whether or not uh, if vaccinations is the right call for you. But really, the best way in my own personal opinion, is to allow enough people to get the, go ahead and get the, go ahead and get sick. Why? Because your immune system is so amazing that it has the ability to to to, to seek, to find, and to destroy these uh, pathogens, and to have the memory of it, so that if if you were to get infected again, it can kill that. It has a quicker response to that particular pathogen. So this is why I prefer personally uh, herd immunity the natural way. And there are so many other benefits to natural uh, herd immunity that it's just, it's just way too many to count. Uh, I can think of one being that it's just definitely safer. Two, uh, since the the coronavirus has been with us for thousands of years, it affects both um, humans and animals alike. That's why you had uh, uh, an easy transmission from bats to uh, to human. So these are viruses that pat they, they're they're pretty much interchangeable with each other, and every couple of years you you are going to get. Um, a mutation of this particular virus. So some are a little bit worse than others, but the fact is that your body already knows how to fight the coronavirus. It's just that it might be a different form of the coronavirus, but your body, your immune system, for thousands of years has been fighting the coronavirus. So when it enters into your body, it already knows, oh, this is a, a, a coronavirus. It might be a different mutation, but it's still a coronavirus that it can attach itself to. 
And so if we allow herd immunity, especially in a natural way, then uh, I believe that it will be a much easier process and, and be much better uh, to handle overall. So you can definitely read more on my blog. It's uh, chadallen.net, C-H-A-D-A-L-L-A-N.net or chadallen.pro, C-H-A-D-A-L-L-E-N.pro. And you can definitely uh, get more information there. I also have a freebie that you can check out uh, on my website, chadallen.net slash freebie or free or uh, Chad Allen, Chad Allen.pro slash freebie. doesn't matter which one you use. The, the net is with a N the pro is with the E N and that's how you uh, can, can distinguish the two, but they take you to, to the exact same uh, location. So, um, what about those who are immunocompromised? So, what do you? Uh, so, what do we do with those who are immunocompromised? Well, the thing is. They're immunocompromised. There's nothing that you can do. And eventually, at one point in their life, they're going to get uh, the COVID-19, regardless of how you try to stop or slow the progression of uh, the COVID-19. It's, it's not going to stop uh, the coronavirus from coming in and attacking a person who is immunocompromised or someone who has a very strong immune system already. So just imagine that you do everything you can possible. You're you're wearing the mask. You're where you are. You're keeping this distance. You're doing everything possible uh, to limit yourself from getting sick. But yet, but yet you still get sick, and that's because no matter what you do, the coronavirus is still going to find its way to you. Whether it be at a, whether you get it and you don't even know that you have it, or whether you get it, you have very mild symptoms, or whether you get it and you have the more severe symptoms, you know, it, you're still going to get the uh, the coronavirus. I'm going to get the coronavirus if I haven't got it already. My wife, everybody's going to get it. So there's nothing that you that we can necessarily do to uh, stop from ourselves from getting it. Now, some people might disagree with that, but it's a virus. It's a virus. So you can slow. The only reason why you slow the progression of of any virus is to keep it from keep it from overflowing the hospitals. You don't want a lot of people from going to the hospital all at one time and causing the health system to basically. Uh, crash because it's not able to handle the influx of people that are there. So you do everything that you, that you can to slow the progression of, of the virus. That's why you wear the mask. That's why you are keeping your distance. You're slowing the progress, but it does not stop anyone from getting uh, the the COVID nineteen, the coronavirus, because it's it's going to happen. I mean, we've already seen four million people. Uh, we've already seen, seen one hundred fifty thousand deaths. The stuff is going to happen. So the immunocompromised, the best way that we can, well, the best thing that we can do um, as far as the, as helping our friends who are immunocompromised, those who have weak immune systems, whatever, uh, is to encourage them, one, to wear a mask, to wash your hands, and the same for you. It's, you know, it's very basic what we're already doing. We are wearing our mask when we are around the people who are immunocompromised. We are washing our hands, keep our hands clean. We are disinfecting the the, uh, the surfaces, and then if we are t uh, if we're about to touch them or touch their things, we are washing our hands again. And when we leave, we wash our hands again, and then we don and, and doff the uh, the the mask the proper way, and then we can protect those who are immunocompromised in that way. But when you're out in public, obviously you do not know if somebody is really immunocompromised or not. 
So it becomes your choice of whether or not you want to wear a mask or don't wear a mask. You know, it's completely your choice. Uh, everybody has their, the pros and cons of why they should or should not wear a mask. It's completely up to you. But, you know, technically, if you already had the antigens, uh, according to many doctors, you don't need to wear a mask because you already had the antigens and then you're not going to get sick again. And if you're being asymptomatic and you're not really uh, coughing or anything, you're not going to pass it on since the coronavirus is airborne. It you know, travels through the air. And so, therefore, uh, you know, masks are not really a necessity at that particular point. So, my conclusion, the conclusion of what we are, we are, what we are discussing is that, is that we have to be, um, how would I put it uh, the right way? We have to be cognizant of our, of, of our surroundings, but a cognizant of also of the realities of things. You know, if we understand our immune system, then we understand that our immune systems can really take care of us. Now, sometimes the immune systems are, like I said, are compromised. And this is why I personally, I take, personally take uh, a supplement that has immune messengers in it. Because when I take the supplement, it helps to boost my immune system. And it helps to boost the, the memory the T cells, the, the natural killer cells that are going out and finding these, uh, these pathogens. And then it gives me greater immunity against uh, these type of pathogens. I can, I can uh, give you examples of, of my uh, daughter who is three and a half years old. I give immune messengers to my daughter because when she gets sick, she is able to recover much, much faster than other children who are experiencing the same thing. You know, so when she's getting a fever and she starts to cough, I, I, I give her uh, immune messengers. And then next, and then probably within a day, day and a half, she doesn't have the fever anymore. Her, her, symptoms, her symptoms start to improve, you know. And then sometimes I, I'll, I don't give it to her all the time because she's three and a half years old. But what I do is I might give her, give it to her just for the, uh, just to give it to her maybe once or twice a week. And then if she gets sick, I increase it, uh, to a couple a day until her symptoms begin to improve. And typically within a day and a half, day, day and a half, her fever is completely gone. And this is typically without any kind of antibiotic or, or, um, fever med or anything like that, and it's it just, boom, done. Now, other times I would use fever med along with that, and then it helps you know, it greatly. But typically, uh, it could take care of, of it by itself. Another example is actually my parents. You know, my mom, and my mom has uh, diabetes. My dad has got a high blood pressure. And both of them, when they are taking it, they are much better health and healthy. And... I could point to my mom when she was taking uh, the immune messenger. She was actually, and she had surgery. She recovered much, much faster than the doctors ever expected. And that is a testament to the immune messengers in helping uh, the overall healing. So the thing is, you want to, you want to protect yourself against the uh, these type of pathogens that are coming into you on a constant basis. And you can do that by by eating the right thing. You can do that by, doing, uh, by uh, wearing your mask more properly. You can do that by keeping your hands washed, that kind of thing. Uh, if you don't wear a mask, you, there's still measures that you could take to help uh, – you know, lower the spread that that would be that would be there. So I, I really want you to think about things that are that that you can do to help yourself. Um, if you want to know more about the immune messengers, you can just uh, go to chadallen.net, c h a d a l l a n dot net, uh, or chadallen.pro, c h a d a l l e n dot pro. And you can, uh, there's a place there that you can actually check out my freebie and 
find out more about these amazing immune messengers. So I want to thank you for being on the call tonight. And I want to encourage you to share this video if it really has helped you. And uh, also, you know, you continue to comment below. I want to thank everybody who has shown, who, who shared uh, and who said hi. June uh, Vibo, thank you so much for being uh, on the call, and Diane as well, and as as, long, as well as others. I want to thank you so much for uh, your time uh, with me, and I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Monday is uh, Healthy Tips uh, Monday. Wednesday is uh, Weight Loss Wednesday, and Friday is the Healthy Essentials and also current event type stuff. So I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. You take care and thank you for being on the call. Bye-bye.